Four Year Brown Rice Bourbon. This is the healthy man's whiskey. <laughs> What's up everyone, I am Jason C. And today on the Master and Drum, we have the newest little book, chapter four, called Lessons Honored, crafted by Freddie No, eighth generation Jim Beam distiller and son of legendary Fred No. Now Freddie chose three unique whiskeys in this blend with a connection to work done over the past decade with his dad. Let's review little book chapter four today on the Master and Drum. So as I mentioned, to create Little Book Chapter 4 Lessons Honored, Freddie chose whiskeys with a connection to work done over the past decade with his father, current beam master distiller Fred No. So what's in the bottle this year? One of the whiskeys in this blend is a four-year-old Kentucky Straight Rice Bourbon. Uh, the whiskey reminded Freddie about the first distilling project he did on his own after guidance from Fred. Next, Freddie chose an eight-year-old Kentucky High Rye Rye Whiskey. In fact, the whiskey is a nod to Booker's Rye, one of the first commemorative releases that the pair worked on together, and probably one of the top five whiskeys I've ever had in my life. Booker's Rye is an absolute beast of a bottle, and I would do very bad things to be able to own a bottle of that, but uh, they're pretty much all gone, and I think they're on the secondary for over $1,000 at this point. Uh, lastly, um, there's a seven-year-old Kentucky Straight Bourbon, which actually helped round out the blend in total. Going into the selection and blending process for this year's release, I had a very clear idea of how I wanted to honor my dad and the story I wanted to tell with this whiskey, said Freddie No. Uh, I knew right away these were the whiskeys I wanted to work with, so I spent most of my time perfecting the blend to balance the flavors to create a whiskey that would make dad proud. I think I did just that, all the way down to the blue neck tag, which represents our favorite sports team, the Kentucky Wildcats. So Little Book Chapter 4 is available now in limited quantities with an MSRP of about $125. Uh, it comes in at 122.8 proof. It's uncut, it's unfiltered. Let's try it. All right, so as you can see, I don't know if you could see here, but this is pretty you know, far down the bottle. I've taken a good amount of sips of this to try to get an accurate review because a lot of these little books each year, are, I think last year was probably, um, probably the least... I don't know, unique when it comes to the blends that he's put together. Uh, that one was just a bunch of, you know, high proof, right out of the barrel, uh, all the small batches they took from Jim Beam, they blended in together to create something pretty awesome. I love that release last year. But the ones before had some rye in it, had some corn whiskey, had a bunch of different things going on and seemed to change each time you go back to it. So I cracked this open a few times and tried to get some tasting notes. Uh, to be a little bit more accurate here with you guys. So let's see what we get. So no surprise here, there is a very big burst of caramel and oak right up front. You get the Jim Beam, you know, peanut note. It's definitely there. There's definitely a nice sweet almond butter characteristic going on here. There is a floral quality to this, uh, to this blend uh, that, you know, I, I don't think I've really smelled a lot on Jim Beam. Uh, either bourbons or whiskeys or whatever it may be. I think the floral quality definitely is something that's coming from that brown rice bourbon. You could definitely smell the spice here. There's some citrus, there's some lemon all coming through from that high rye whiskey that's in here. I thought that was a really interesting component of this blend as well because the high rye, you know, when you think Jim Beam, their rye whiskeys are generally not high rye at all. Those are some barely legal Kentucky rye whiskeys that are a little bit more on the sweet side rather than the spicy. So you can really smell the spice coming through here. 
Yeah, it's way more sweet on the nose than I thought it was going to be. Um, there is a starchy quality to it. If you, if you, um, if, if you remember the beginning of the video, and I did, you know, I showed the close-ups of the bottle, and I was literally messing around with some brown rice. I, uh, I took a smell of some brown rice just to see what kind of characteristics it gave off. And it did. It gave off a little bit of a starchy, nutty, and sweet characteristic that I think probably plays pretty well to the Jim Beam profile overall. Yeah, but nothing too surprising here. I think the, the, the big surprise is that floral, maybe starchy type quality it has to it. But I really love the high rye and the sweetness coming through on here as well. So let's go for a sip. Here we go. Right up front, a lot of sugar. Get a big burst of sweetness up front. This is very rich caramel, rich vanilla. Not unlike like a really good, you know, Booker's bourbon, if you've ever had one of those. There's some fruit there. Kind of rounds out though, it's, it's staying on the, ooh, the finish is nice on this. It's definitely staying on the sweet side, but the finish on this one is just, I think that's kind of the star of the show and I've been getting that since I've been trying this bottle. The finish is, that's, you definitely taste the high rye going on in the back. Um, I'm sure you've, you're tasting a little bit of the proof and the punch and the power there as well. But all that high rye spiciness just lingers on and on. It's kind of like a, um, yeah, if you've ever had a high rye bourbon from MGP, like a 35% or 40% rye or one of those high rye bourbons uh, or whiskeys, you definitely can feel that on the back end. Let's go for another sip here. I will say what's unique about this whiskey too is there's a heft to it. There's, a, um, there's almost like a weight to it. It's very viscous on the palate. It's very creamy, which I love. I think there's, um, whether, you know, the brown rice is playing some part in that, I do think there's a really nice heft to it. Very creamy, very oily. But yeah, the star of the show on this is the, the back end, the, the finish on this. It's spicy, it's fruity, very citrusy. I'm getting citrus, I'm getting lemon. I'm getting that, that tangy, like a tanginess to it as well. It's like a sweet and a sour, kind of mixed up with the with the fruit characteristics. It's very unique. Uh, let's go for another sip. Yeah, but the more you taste it, it just really just gets nice and sweet. Um, the peanut, you know, the peanut butter, almond butter note is there, but it's a lot of vanilla, a lot of caramel, way sweeter than I was thinking it was going to be. My mind, when you know you hear brown rice, it's not really the sweetest thing in the world you hear, but you know, when it's mashed and when it's uh, cooked down and uh, when it's distilled, you know, the sweet flavors, the nuttiness all comes out. And I think that's playing a big uh, part in this whiskey. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple drops of water to this and see what it does. So have a small glass here. Let's see how this opens up here. I probably equated this to about maybe six to eight drops of water. So I'm going to spin this a little bit. Let's see what we get. So when you proof it down, more of the oak, uh, the rich oak, the caramel, some of that starchiness, I think, really comes out of the glass. A little more cherry. Still getting that nice citrus note, the lemon, um, the, the orange spice. There was a really nice, rich, like, light caramel just kind of, you know, lacing everything in this glass. It's really sweet. Let's go for a sip. You cannot deny the spice on the back end of this, I'm telling you. On the front, super, super sweet still, even with some water put in there. The caramel notes, the fruitiness of it. There's like this just beautiful, like, um, like this creamy caramel, like dolce de, de leche type flavor to it. If you ever had that dessert where it's just like this creamy, type of caramel, you know, like feeling you get because I feel like the, the, the splendid whiskey is so viscous. There's like this dolce de leche thing going on. It's, it's like I said, it's, it kind of blew me away how sweet this actually is. It's way sweeter than I thought it would be. But on that back end though, you cannot deny the high rise spice that's going on. No matter what you do, I proofed it down. There's still this spiking, like this cinnamon, burst of rye spice that lingers on, a little bit of black pepper. But also in the back end though, you get this really nice kind of hint of 
cherry, caramel, uh, orange spice just all lingering in the back end. That's a hell of a blend, I gotta say. It's very different. It's it's nothing that I really expected when you hear, you know, brown rice bourbon. Let's go for one last sip. Very nice rich caramel, vanilla, mid palate. That's where you start feeling that viscosity. You get the oak, you get the almond butter. Then when it works its way back, that's when the star of the show appears. The high rye kicks in, you get the spice, you get the citrus, little that dolce di leche type uh, dessert quality to it. Definitely viscous still, even with the water added to it. It's a really good blend and definitely something that I would not have expected from uh, this type of blend once I read the tag. All right, guys, so let's go to the final breakdown. So the price on this is 125 bucks. Um, I've seen this on secondary already for about 200. I don't think it's worth 200 at all. Uh, the value on this for 125, I think is right where it should be. Uh, you do have some unique whiskeys in here. Not often enough you get to taste a high rye from Jim Beam, a high rye whiskey, uh, or a uh, brown rice bourbon for that matter. So I think the uniqueness uh, and the whiskeys that are in this blend, I think definitely call for a little bit more of a, of a price jump on that one. But I do think the value is right where it should be. Also, one thing I will say about Little Books is sometimes when they do release, people price them less for you know the sticker price. Last year I saw that happen with uh, The Road Home, which was chapter three, where the MSRP on that was about 160 and people were finding it for about 120, 110. Uh, sometimes I think I heard a couple people get it for under 100. So, so definitely wherever you are, definitely keep an eye out because the prices could fluctuate wherever you may be. The availability on this, as I mentioned, is limited. This is obviously a limited release. Little books every year have been. Uh, but if you live in an area where they get a lot of Jim Beam products and you're interested in the little books, uh, definitely keep an eye out. Now the toughest question for this one was, do I recommend? All right. I'm going to say yes if you're a very big Booker's fan because I think that this tastes like one of the better Booker's batches. Now Booker's, for the most part, is basically a lot of, you know, peanut funk, peanut shell, oak, caramel, vanilla, very straightforward. But every now and again, kind of like Country Ham was last year, you get a really great Booker's batch that has just all these different components and layers of flavors that you really like. A lot of brown sugar, richer caramel, nice spice on the back end. This tastes like, like, you know, an ultimate Booker's batch. It's got the peanut, it's got the almond butter in there, it's got the sweetness, the caramel, the oak, but that high rye spice on the back end is what definitely puts this over the top. So I think if you're a huge fan of Booker's and that Jim Beam profile and want to taste something very different, this is an absolute definite pickup. Um, on the other hand, for those of you that aren't big, huge Jim Beam fans, um, I would say this is a try before you buy. It's different, it's very sweet, but I will say that high rise spice on the back end and the way it kind of lingers on and that, that starchiness quality to it might be something you want to try before you buy. But all in all, I'm loving this one. I think it's a very, very solid release from Jim Beam. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this review for Little Book Chapter 4, Lessons Honored from Freddie No out of Jim Beam. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this yet, if you found one, what you think of this one. Did you get some of the same notes I did? Was it a little bit different? Um, these bottles definitely tend to change over time as well. This one hasn't too much. I think it's just gotten a little bit less oaky and more sweet. The more air has gotten into it, which I think is a good thing. Uh, always love talking to you guys, and as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and uh, here's to chapter four of Little Book. Take care, everybody.